This is a teaching video. In this video, we're going to be discussing the TMJ. We're going to watch a little clip with Dr. Vincent Clark, and he's going to talk about TMJ's impact upon his son's health. We're also going to watch a video clip where putting in mouth guards and gapping the TMJ changes patients who have dystonia and Tourette's and makes them much more normal. When I found this video, I thought how interesting we chiropractors have been doing with the TMJ for 100 years, and it's good to see that science is validating some of these concepts. This is a great case study because Brian has a TMJ issue, a TL issue, and pelvic floor injury, all contributing to his dysfunction. Let's watch this case. How much better were you after your last visit? Yo, crazy. A lot better, a lot better. <laughs> like, I wanna say like 95% better okay honestly like uh me and my wife talked about it we waited like a, i want to say like a day and a half two days to see and talk about how i really felt and i am feeling a lot better yeah i'm feeling a lot better honestly Good. it was weird I, I i don't know if last time did he, did he work on my leg or something like that i did yeah because um, i suffered bro suffered bro from um my left calf uh -huh. this right here would always be like like i feel like like i just put it on, a, on an intense training session you know, so I'll wake up in the morning and then today I woke up and I was just like, I was starting moving and I usually move and I feel the tightness, but I didn't feel it today. Try this one, push out for me. Push out, huh? Uh, okay, uh, hip, hips, both hips or just? Uh, I was doing physical therapy for my partial torn ACL. Okay. Uh, you know, I had a 25 pound ball weight and I was doing squats, um, keep my core tight and doing twists, you know? Okay. Doing a cross. And when I turned, I felt a, uh, like a little snap, like a pop in my hip. Because it's always felt weak when I was training Mississippi. So both hips are mostly the right? Mostly the right hip, but not. Push out. Push out. Ah, bend this knee for me. Don't let me pull. Okay. Oh. Try this one. Don't let Bilateral me hip weakness like that is uncommon, by the way. Right. Now, during his exam, we can see that you know, his muscle timing is off. And because I know of his mixed martial arts, I thought well, we should check his TMJ. Open your mouth, bite. Push up. And it changes almost all of his muscle function except for the right latissimus dorsi. Push up. Good. Push out for me. Good. <laughs> Try this, push towards me. Push towards the door. Good. Push towards your hip. Okay. Try that one again. Ready? Arm straight. Don't let me pull. Almost fixes everything. Push towards your hip. Uh huh. I clench my jaw. I bite my jaw a lot. Deactivating all my muscles? Technically, it's causing a lack of stimulation to an area of your brain called the cerebellum. So it's causing your sequencing and your timing to be off. It um, predisposes you to an injury because your muscles are not firing as fast yeah, as Yeah, exactly. They're not firing exactly what I want them to do. Correct. All right, so here we're going to take a segue. We're going to watch this video of this doctor. He talks about his son. And this is a great case study about medications and the TMJ. We're going to tie that back in. So this is a picture of my son, Ryan. And Ryan got a syndrome, syndrome called complex regional pain syndrome. He um, twisted his ankle. His ankle got better, but a few weeks later, the pain came back, and it didn't go away. And this is a picture of Ryan's legs. And you notice that um, the leg you see on the right is a different color than the one on the left. That's a part of the syndrome. When he hurts himself, his body shuts down blood flow to that area. That lets cytokines, histamine, all those nasty chemicals build up, and they actually cause a secondary 
pain issue on top of whatever caused the pain issue to begin with. It's a really difficult syndrome. It's been tough for him, tough for his parents, tough for all of us. The doctors, very good people, very nice people, they really wanted the best for Ryan, put him on some medications. And a few months later, he started to get these episodes. He would just collapse spontaneously and go into spasms. They could go from a few minutes to hours at a time. Sometimes he would get dystonia, where his body would completely lock up. He'd be unable to move. It got really scary when he had trouble breathing, and we checked him into the hospital. When he was in the hospital, the doctors ran their tests and basically said it must be psychogenic. And psychogenic is a code word for the kids a little bonkers. They thought it was all mental. We weren't convinced, though. This is a very sane, very bright kid. We took him off his medications, and it turned out to be a side effect of one of the medications he's on called uh, amitriptyline. Um, and he's actually very sensitive. He actually gets these kind of symptoms to a lot of different medications. So as of today, he's pretty much medication-free, at least in terms of uh, uh, prescription allopathic medication. Um, but we needed another alternative for him. And he still has a lot of uh, issues. He, he gets relapses. He'll hurt himself. He'll go back on crutches and a wheelchair, whatever. And we can't give him drugs now, but he needs help. It, he needs a way to get over that pain. It turns out that there uh, is this really interesting, unexpected benefit to simply biting down on a stack of tongue depressors. So this is Ryan. And um, I have some movies here. Uh, let's see. So. Ryan had been in a wheelchair for about a month before this movie that you see here. We just gave him a stack of tongue depressors to bite down on. And this was literally the first time he walked for a month. It seemed incredible, but it turns out that I think there's a, there's a, a benefit to this that's been completely overlooked by modern medicine. Now, it's very old. You remember a long time ago, before anesthesia, they would give people something to bite on when they did surgery. The assumption was that so you didn't bite down so hard that you break your teeth. It turns out there's a brain effect of biting, separate from any of that. It causes analgesia, and it can correct a lot of symptoms of motor syndromes that are currently really untreatable by modern medicine. Um, so this is Ryan a couple days later, and we actually built him a little mouth guard that you'll see in a second he, he, he has in his mouth. And at, at this point, he was getting better. You notice the color change starting to go away in his leg. And within a few days, he, could re he resumed physical therapy, and he was completely out of the wheelchair within, within a week or so. so it was just a spectacular change, completely without medication and very effective. And now, you know, he, he still has bad days, but he has a lot of good days too. There's other symptoms that this helps with. My um, symptoms were twitching, by barking noises. I twitch my neck back and forth, cause myself whiplash. Amazing, I mean. You, I've always went and look at, looked at people and just wishing that I could just stay still. So, oops. so, so that's a, a young man with Tourette's syndrome. And in the beginning uh, was before he got a, a mouth guard and afterwards was after he was treated by a dentist for some TMJ issues. And his Tourette's basically disappeared with, with the use of that mouth guard. Um, then there's a, a Another story, this, this woman, after a um, car accident, developed some really nasty issues with muscle control. She had a lot of trouble walking. And this is the first time she tried just biting on a stack of tongue depressors. And just immediately, that problem resolved. Again, she'd been to dozens of doctors. 
Neurologists like to call her syndrome psychogenic. They think it's psychological, and it may be. I can't say. But why would she respond to this when she hadn't responded to the last umpteen doctor visits that she'd been to? Why? What's so special about biting down? And there's many other patients, too. I can show you dozens of examples, individual examples of patients that benefited. This, uh, this fellow had uh, blepharospasm. It's basically dystonia of the eyelids, very hard to open his eyes. When he puts something in his mouth and bites down, his eyes just pop open. And that look of surprise is basically just opening his eyes, but also being surprised that it works, you know. Um, this is a, a fellow who, after, also after an accident, um, had to use a cane most of the time. He put a stack of tongue depressors in and he threw down his cane. <laughs> and it's just like being in a revival meeting when we get <laughs> patients in. I, it's incredible. Um, here's, here's another fellow with uh, Tourette's and, and with a mouth guard, it's hard to see a little bit because it's taken from a movie. But um, again, it resolved. He was on, I think, eight or 12 different drugs at this point. With a mouth guard, he doesn't need them. Um, this is a woman uh, also who, who had a lot of issues. She actually had uh, pain syndrome, much like my son Ryan's. And for her, it progressed to this really advanced state where she get all tied up. And with tongue depressors, she just loosens up and can walk and, and, uh, and so on. So I'm intrigued. <laughs> um, we're doing some imaging studies. And uh, like... TDCS, it's hard to come up with a control, but one thing we've come up with is different thicknesses of mouth guards. It turns out that a thin enough mouth guard is basically ineffective. It doesn't produce this benefit. So we try different sizes of mouth guards. We're doing imaging studies. One of the things we've noticed is that with thicker mouth guards, you tend to see this effect in the cerebellum um, that isn't there with thinner mouth guards or when people don't have anything at all in their mouth. So that's one piece of evidence that it's, it's altering brain networks. Biting down alters brain networks. Um, this is the result of a larger study, uh, a total of 12 patients and a few healthy controls mixed in to, to increase the N. Um, this is the interaction of the effect of performing a voluntary movement by rest with biting down on something in your mouth, either tongue depressors or a mouth guard versus relaxation. So two by two design. This is the interaction between, between those two, um, significant with an FDR of 0.05. And you see a lot of brain areas alter their response depending on whether or not you're biting down. So um, now let's go back into our case with Brian and you can see the impact that the TMJ has upon human function. Oh, geez. Rest for a little bit, okay? Brian, how was that? That's good. Yeah, how do you, how do you, why do you think the dog? Well, I used to do mixed martial arts. It's common that, you know, guys are choking, you know, rear naked chokes. Yeah, they're so holding the mouthpiece and stuff like that. But, you know, they go for the choke and you put your chin down and then they're forcing your chin and your jaw joints into your jaw. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm so used to using my chin and like using, pressing down on that arm. Yeah. You know, that little pinch is not that pinch anymore. It's less? Yeah, it's less. I feel good, I feel, um, I feel good. <laughs> it's weird, man, it's like magic. <laughs> oh, yeah, stuck. Don't let me pull. So I'm checking his left hamstring. Remember, it's his left knee that had the injury and his left calf. And the reason I went to the TL junction is because previously Brian had demonstrated that he had pain in that area. Okay. All right, so this is some trigger point work and I'm going to speed this section up. Ah! 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 Oh. <laughs> oh. You like that? 
Ah. 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 Yeah, let's go. You ready? Yeah. I want you to pull your toe up. Okay. I'm going to try to straighten your leg. Do no. not let me. All right. Here what I'm attempting to do is to separate whether it's Brian's hamstring or his calf that's actually out. So even after the adjustment, he's still showing that left hamstring weakness. So after trying all these different things, I made the decision to try Brian's pelvic floor. Remember, Brian said he had an injury while squatting, and the pelvic floor, when you lose stability in that, you lose stability in distal muscles, in this example, the hamstring muscle. So that trigger point therapy helped facilitate that left hamstring, which should also help through muscle chains support his left calf. On a technical note here, it's very common for males and females to injure that pelvic floor while squatting. It's also very common for females to have an injury after childbirth to that area that doesn't get corrected. How's that? Oh, crazy, bro. Yo, that's insane. I'm like mind blown, bro. You're like me. <laughs> this is I, crazy. No, yo, this is crazy. Yo, man. Thank you. Yo, thank you. Thank you.